As he woke up again, a sense of confusion lingered from a strange dream he had just experienced. In the dream, he saw Ressa dressed as Santa Claus, and the whole scene felt surreal and perplexing. Though the details of the dream remained unclear, he knew one thing for sure. It wasn't a normal dream for him. After enjoying breakfast together at the lodge, they set out to do some shopping before continuing their journey. The apothecary couldn't shake off the odd feeling from his dream earlier that morning. As a result, he tried to maintain a respectable distance from Resser, perhaps chalking up the dreamy episode to her simply slipping into her own dreams after their morning cuddles. As they embarked on their journey from North Bale on a deer carriage, the apothecary and Resser still had a half-day's travel ahead of them before reaching his friend's place nestled in the mountains. With the open road stretching out before them, they found themselves with another opportunity to engage in conversation. Curious and pondering over the kindness she had received from the apothecary, Resser finally voiced her question. She wondered aloud why he was so nice to her, as nobody had ever treated her with such care and consideration before. Yet, she harbored doubts about whether he would even disclose his reasons, considering he had even kept his name a secret from her. Despite his guarded nature, the apothecary decided to share a bit of his own backstory with Resser. He revealed that he, too, had experienced a life-saving act of kindness from someone similar to her. Abandoned as a baby, he faced the grim fate of starvation until a demon intervened, rescuing him and granting him a chance at life. Reflecting on this pivotal moment, he acknowledged that if not for the benevolent act of that mysterious figure, he wouldn't be alive, sitting beside her on that carriage. This profound experience shaped his worldview, instilling in him a belief that everyone deserves a chance to be saved, just as he had been. It was this sentiment that guided his actions towards Resser when he first encountered her in a vulnerable state. For the apothecary, extending kindness and offering assistance was not merely a choice, but a deeply ingrained belief born out of gratitude for his own salvation. As the deer carriage came to a halt at the foot of the summit, it became apparent that their journey was far from over. With the rest of the way up requiring travel by foot, the duo strapped on their snowshoes and set out on foot. However, as they began their ascent, the apothecary's condition took a turn for the worse. A feverish sensation washed over him, accompanied by overwhelming fatigue. The strain of their long journey was finally catching up to him, and he struggled to press on. Uncertainty clouded his mind as he tried to pinpoint the cause of his illness. He wondered if it was the lingering effects of the snake venom, or perhaps the biting cold of the mountain air. Regardless of the cause, the worsening weather only served to exacerbate his condition, as snow began to fall steadily around them. Realizing that continuing on in such conditions would only worsen his health, they sought refuge in the shelter of a rocky outcrop, where they could wait out the approaching blizzard. Huddled together for warmth, they could only hope for the storm to pass quickly so they could resume their journey to safety. As they huddled together in the little cave, the apothecary couldn't shake off the feeling of guilt for leading them to such a predicament. He apologized to Resser for their current situation, but to his dismay, she blamed herself, thinking even the change in weather was somehow her fault. As they waited, the apothecary's fever showed no signs of slowing down, and the blizzard outside only intensified. It became increasingly apparent that they might have to spend the entire night in their rocky refuge. Though he wasn't thrilled about sleeping on the cold ground, exhaustion overtook him, and he drifted off into a restless sleep, perhaps dreaming of warmth and comfort. The next morning brought a temporary respite from the storm, but the apothecary's condition had only worsened. He struggled to make progress, his fever leaving him weak and disoriented. To make matters worse, his vision started to blur, signaling a dangerous decline in his health. Realizing the urgency of their situation, the apothecary knew he had to call for help. Despite his weakened state, he mustered up the strength to send a rescue signal to his friend. But as he did, he felt himself slipping further into unconsciousness, his strength rapidly dwindling. It seemed as though their survival depended on the arrival of help, and time was running out. As Resser watched the apothecary's condition worsen, her worry grew into a determination to help him by any means necessary. Remembering the pendant he had given her, she activated it, hoping its signaling magic would bring them the assistance they so desperately needed. With no other options left, they could only wait and hope for a miracle. Meanwhile, several leagues away, atop a cliff, 
a masked figure spotted the signal emanating from Resu's pendant. Recognizing the distress call, they wasted no time in springing into action, knowing that someone was in dire need of their help. Back in the comfort of a warm bed, the apothecary stirred from his unconscious state, momentarily confused by his surroundings. As he took in his surroundings, he realized that his hardships had not been a dream at all. To his surprise and relief, he found himself in the presence of his old friend, Adam, the demon who had once saved his life. Grateful for his friend's timely intervention, the apothecary felt a wave of relief wash over him. Despite the challenges they had faced, they were now in the safe hands of a trusted ally. As the apothecary was filled in on the events of the previous day, including their rescue by Adam's servant Gauche, he couldn't help but feel a mixture of relief and embarrassment. Adam scolded him for sending a weak signal that failed to properly indicate their location. It was clear that without Ghosh's intervention, their fate could have been far bleaker, possibly succumbing to the harsh elements or falling prey to snow leopards. Although reassured that Ressu was safe, the apothecary found himself on the receiving end of Adam's lecture. He was admonished for overexerting himself in monster battles while neglecting his mana training. It was a stark reminder of his responsibilities and the need to prioritize his well-being. Despite the relief of their rescue, the apothecary couldn't shake off the feeling of being scolded like a child. He hoped that his time with Adam wouldn't be filled with constant reprimands, fearing that Resser might perceive him as nothing more than someone who's always being scolded. Despite Adamska's unconventional methods and questionable ethical practices in his pursuit of medical knowledge, the apothecary harbored a genuine fondness for the ex-human turned demon. Adamska's relentless quest for understanding the intricacies of the body often led him to stalk fresh parts and conduct ethically dubious medical magic experiments. However, beneath his eccentricities, the apothecary recognized that Adam Skull was not inherently malevolent. Having known Adam Skull for a considerable period, the apothecary could attest to the fact that his friend's eccentricities stemmed from a deep-seated curiosity rather than any malicious intent. Unlike himself, Adam Skull possessed the necessary expertise to handle Resser's arms and legs, which were the primary reason for embarking on their arduous and perilous journey. Despite their differences in approach and perspective, the apothecary valued Adamska's friendship and trusted his abilities. He knew that with Adamska's assistance, they stood a better chance of achieving their objective and helping Ressa reclaim her lost limbs. Adam expressed relief upon seeing the apothecary safe and sound, but he wasted no time in getting down to business, inquiring about the money. Understanding the practicalities of their situation, the apothecary presented the shiny coins he had brought along satisfying Adam's concerns about their financial stability for the time being. With the monetary matters settled, Adam's curiosity and excitement as a medic were reignited, especially at the prospect of working with Elf Bowens after a prolonged absence. Eager to begin the treatment, Adam Skye initiated his examination of Resser, utilizing his innate magical ability known as Alma. This mystical power, intricately linked with his soul, had been honed through rigorous training, allowing Adam to perform detailed and precise inspections of Resser's condition. As Resser passed out during her examination, a wave of concern washed over everyone present. However, they breathed a collective sigh of relief when she regained consciousness just in time for dinner. Gathered around the dinner table, Adam shared his insights with the apothecary regarding Resser's condition. He explained that while the damage to her skin and internal organs would likely heal naturally over time, her limbs and eyes posed significant challenges. Regarding her eyes, Adam revealed a troubling discovery. Someone had deliberately obstructed Resser's sight with mana in her right eye, indicating malicious intent. Additionally, her left eye was beyond repair, rendering it irreparable even with a replacement. Turning his attention to her limbs, Adam uncovered a corrosion spell that had infected them severely, complicating matters further. It was evident that someone harbored ill intentions toward Resser, intentionally impeding her recovery at every turn. The gravity of the situation weighed heavily on them as they grappled with the realization that Resser's journey to regain her health would be fraught with challenges and obstacles, with an unknown adversary working against her every step of the way. As they assessed Resser's condition, one glimmer of hope emerged. Her elf metabolism was slowing down the deterioration of her limbs. However, despite this small positive, the overall outlook remained grim. Her injuries were severe, and the task of healing her limbs seemed insurmountable. 
the apothecary couldn't help but grapple with feelings of guilt and self-doubt. He questioned whether his hesitation to amputate Resser's limbs had jeopardized her life, and the weight of this possibility hung heavy on his conscience. He knew that he had to do everything in his power to save her, even if it meant making difficult and painful decisions. Adam, adopting a serious tone, laid out everything before them. Leaving Resser's limbs untreated could prove fatal, and the only viable option left was amputation. Despite the gravity of the situation, they had meticulously planned the surgery, leaving only one daunting task remaining, informing Resser of the impending amputation. With heavy hearts and a sense of grim determination, they prepared to deliver the news to Resser, knowing that it would be a difficult and emotional conversation. However, they were resolved to do whatever it took to ensure her survival, even if it meant making the sacrifice to save her life. As Adam instructed the apothecary to waste no time in delivering the news to Resser, he also expressed his need to speak with her privately about something important. Understanding the urgency of the situation, the apothecary hurried towards Resser's room, his heart heavy with the weight of the impending conversation. Meanwhile, Adam set off to search through his collection of spare limbs, hoping to find ones that matched Resser's size and specifications. Despite Adam's demonic nature, the apothecary couldn't help but wonder if it was normal for him to have such a collection. Nevertheless, he trusted that Adam's intentions were genuine and that he would find a suitable replacement for Resser. As the apothecary entered Resser's room, he couldn't help but notice the peaceful expression on her face as she lay in bed. Despite the gravity of the situation, she greeted him with a smile, expressing relief at seeing him okay. With a heavy heart, the apothecary relayed Adam's message, explaining the necessity of the surgery and the lack of alternative solutions. Resser listened in silence, her expression betraying a mixture of fear and determination. After a moment of reflection, she gathered her courage and expressed her readiness to undergo the surgery, placing her trust in him. Despite her attempt to appear strong, the apothecary noticed the subtle trembling of her shoulders, a sign of the immense emotional strain she was under. He admired her resilience and strength, recognizing that beneath her delicate exterior, Resser possessed a fierce spirit that had carried her through countless challenges. He couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude towards Resser for her bravery and resilience. Despite the daunting task ahead, he found solace in the knowledge that they would face it together. The apothecary is also overwhelmed with the trust she has built in him and decides that he will do everything in his power not to betray this. The big moment is coming closer and Adam, who is helping out, finally finds the perfect arm and leg for Resser. He's been searching through his stuff and finally gets what he needs. Then comes the part where they make Resser go to sleep for the surgery. They use something called anesthesia, which makes her sleep really deeply. They also tie her arms and legs to keep them still. Before they start cutting, they make sure everything is super clean. They clean all their tools really well to keep Resser safe. Resser lies down, all ready for the surgery. She gets the anesthesia, and then the two men begin. One of them uses a special knife that vibrates to cut off her old limbs. It might sound scary, but they're really careful and make sure it doesn't hurt her. The other guy is busy connecting her new limbs, making sure they fit just right. Ressa wakes up a little bit during the surgery. She looks around, feeling kind of dazed and confused. The apothecary feels really relieved that the anesthesia is working. He knows how awful it would be to feel all that pain from getting your limbs cut off. Luckily, Adam knows what he's doing. He's done this kind of thing before so the apothecary starts feeling hopeful that Resser will be okay. As the surgery goes on, the apothecary watches Adam work. He's amazed at how well Adam handles everything. Adam seems to know exactly where to put the nerves and bones, almost like magic. Plus, the limbs he picked out for Resser look good on her. They don't make her look scary or anything. But then, the apothecary notices something strange. Adam keeps talking to himself and giggling while he works on Resser's limbs. It's kind of weird, but the apothecary decides not to say anything. He figures Adam must have his reasons. They leave Resser to rest for a while, giving her time to wake up slowly. When she finally opens her eyes, she's really happy that the surgery is over. But things feel a bit strange to her, like everything is lighter than usual. She can't feel her new limbs yet, and she knows she might have to deal with some pain for a while. But she's just so relieved that all the bad stuff is gone now. 
Resu learns that she has to do some special exercises to help her nerves and mana channels get back to normal. It sounds like a lot of work, but she's willing to do whatever it takes to feel better. Adam says his job is done now. He can't stick around to take care of Resu all the time. The apothecary realizes that Resu is his responsibility now, but he's okay with that. He's grateful to Adam for doing such a great job with the surgery, even if it costs a lot of money. Money isn't the most important thing to the apothecary anyway. After the surgery, they decide to stay at Adam's place for a while. The apothecary needs to rest up and recover from all the hard work he's been doing. Plus, they want to keep a close eye on Resser's condition, which can be pretty unpredictable. While they're staying at Adam's mansion, he keeps the apothecary busy with chores. He's basically making him clean the whole place, even the cold storage area. But the apothecary doesn't mind at all. He feels like he owes Adam a lot for helping with Resser's surgery, so he's happy to do whatever he can to help out. During one of their regular checkups on Resser, the apothecary asks her about her dentures. They seem to be bothering her a bit, but she says she's okay. The apothecary gets really excited when he sees her fingers moving. It's a sign that her nerves are starting to wake up, even though she still can't feel anything with them. Resser isn't as excited as he is though. She's still unable to feel any sensations in her fingers, and it's frustrating for her. But the apothecary sees it as a hopeful sign. He believes that if they keep doing their exercises, she'll eventually be able to move her new arm like it's supposed to. As the days go by, Resser's nerves start to reconnect, which is a really good sign. It's decided that it's time for them to head back to the apothecary's workshop. But before they leave, Adam wants to make sure everything is okay with Resser's new limbs. He checks her over one last time to be sure there won't be any problems. Then, Adam takes Resser to the terrace for a private chat. The apothecary wonders what they could be talking about. Out there, Adam starts by telling her something serious. He explains that parts of her body have been badly damaged, especially the female parts. It's not something easy to hear, but he wants her to know the truth. He tells her that there are risky procedures she could try to fix it, but it's up to her to decide. Their conversation on the terrace lasts for a few minutes. They're both really focused, not moving from their spots at all. When they come back, the apothecary can tell from their expressions that it wasn't a light-hearted talk. It seems like they were discussing something really important and maybe difficult to handle. As the apothecary and Resser get ready to head home, Resser looks upset for some reason. Maybe she's feeling anxious about the road trip ahead. Just as they're getting everything together, Adam interrupts them. He has something he wants to give to the apothecary. Adam leads them down to the basement of the mansion, where they end up in a storage room. The apothecary's eyes light up when he sees something special. It turns out to be an air gal, a custom-made piece of dwarven technology that his savior used to ride. This technology was supposed to be lost, but somehow Adam managed to find it. Adam explains that he doesn't have any use for it, so he's offering it to the apothecary. They can use it to travel back home. It's a generous gift and the apothecary is really excited about it. This air gal could make their journey a lot easier and faster. It's a thoughtful gesture from Adam, and the apothecary feels grateful for his kindness. As they're about to leave, Resser says goodbye to Adam and promises to help him with chores the next time they visit. But Adam doesn't seem too keen on inviting them back. He explains that he's done with his research using the elf's body, so there's not much reason for them to return. They start up the air gal, a magical device powered by mana stones that lifts them into the air, and they say goodbye to Adam's mansion as they fly away. The apothecary is grateful for the air gal, but he knows it's not without its drawbacks. It needs a lot of energy and regular maintenance, which might be too much to handle. When they get back home to the workshop, they settle in for about a week. The apothecary feels relieved to be back home. He's even stashed the air gal on the porch, a clear sign that he's decided not to use it again. Despite its usefulness, nothing beats the comfort and familiarity of home for the apothecary. Resser is doing well after the surgery, and thankfully, there haven't been any complications. Her wounds are healing nicely, and soon she'll have her smooth skin back. Now that Resser is awake and conscious, the apothecary finds himself feeling a bit awkward about giving her a bath. Luckily, Annette and Monet arrive to help out. They invite Resser to join them when they go to the bath which solves the problem for the apothecary. Resser happily accepts the invitation, looking forward to enjoying the warm bath. 
As Ressa relaxes in the soothing water, the apothecary hopes that it will help her feel more comfortable and at ease. He's grateful to Annette and Monet for their help and relieved that Ressa is able to enjoy a moment of relaxation during her recovery. Annette and Monet decide to stay for dinner with the duo after helping Ressa with her bath. It's a cozy evening, and everyone enjoys each other's company. Ressa's scars look better, and it's clear that the bath was a good idea. The apothecary applies some healing salve to her wounds, hoping it will help them heal even further. He's determined to help Ressa move past her old appearance, wanting her to feel confident and comfortable in her own skin again. Another task on the apothecary's agenda is cutting Ressa's hair. He may not be a professional hairstylist, but he knows it's important for her to reclaim her identity. Ressa had grown out her bangs to hide her face, but now there's no need for that anymore. Additionally, he's made her an eye patch to protect her sunken left eye. As he carefully trims her bangs and adjusts the eye patch, Ressa starts to look like a normal girl again, even with the pirate-like eye patch. The apothecary hopes that these changes will help her blend in more and avoid attracting unwanted attention from the villagers. It's a small step towards her feeling more like herself again, and he's glad to be able to help her on this journey to recovery. With Ressa on the road to recovery, the apothecary can finally return to his usual routine. He's eager to get back to work, not just because he enjoys it, but also because he needs to attend to other patients who can pay for his services. His long vacation is over, and he's ready to dive back into his work at the workshop. During the day, the apothecary busies himself with his patients, providing medicines to those in need and attending to various ailments. Meanwhile, Ressa spends her time outside, connecting with nature and absorbing mana from the atmosphere to replenish her magical reserves. As a magical elf, mana flows throughout her body, and this natural environment helps her recharge. After work, the apothecary assists Ressa with her limb exercises. He's determined to accelerate her recovery, so he uses a combination of electric and vibration magic to stimulate her muscles. It's a painful process for Ressa, but it's necessary for her progress. Despite the pain, there's a newfound determination in Ressa's eyes. It's a determination the apothecary has never seen before. It seems she's no longer resigned to a meaningless fate. Instead, she's embracing the chance for a better life, and the apothecary is committed to helping her achieve it. Together, they'll overcome the challenges ahead. As the days pass, the apothecary and Ressa continue their recovery exercises, facing both good days and tough ones. Some days, they make progress and feel like they're moving forward. Other days, it feels like they're stuck in place, with no improvement in sight. But through it all, they refuse to give up hope. During this time, Ressa has been working hard on her speech. Her words have become much clearer, and they're able to have real conversations now, even though her memories are still fuzzy. In one of their sessions, the apothecary decides to focus on Ressa's wrist and elbow movements, hoping to restore her ability to move freely and flex her joints. As Ressa tries to bend her wrist, something unexpected happens. Her hand starts to glow with magical energy. The apothecary is taken aback by this development. Ressa is actually using magic with her hands now, and it feels surreal for him to witness it. It's a promising sign of her progress and a reminder of the magical potential within her. With this newfound ability, they're one step closer to her full recovery, and the apothecary is filled with renewed hope for the future. Ressa explains to the apothecary that her glowing hand was actually an attempt to surprise him, but she couldn't control her magic when he held her hand for the first time. It seems that the physical contact triggered something magical within her, causing her magic to reveal itself without her intending it to. She seems quite happy about this mistake, indicating that there was something more than just magic at play during their touch. In fact, Ressa shares that she gained control of her hand earlier that morning. The first thing she did was practice channeling magic through her newly recovered hand. After being unable to use her hands for so long, being able to wield magic once again must be a remarkable feeling for her. It's clear that Ressa has missed the sensation of magic at her fingertips, and now that she can use it freely, she's filled with excitement and joy. The apothecary is amazed by Ressa's rapid progress in her recovery and feels a swell of pride for her dedication to her exercises. Her determination has driven her to achieve so much in such a short time, and he couldn't be happier for her. Amidst their excitement, a delivery arrives from the local craftsman. 
The apothecary eagerly opens it and is delighted to find that his order is just as he imagined. With a smile, he asks Resser to try it out, revealing that the mysterious object is a wheelchair. He explains that he ordered the wheelchair to better prepare them for any future travel plans. Carrying Resser on his back for entire journeys is impractical and exhausting, so the wheelchair will make their travels much smoother and more efficient. The apothecary can hardly believe how perfectly the wheelchair has turned out, especially since he provided the sketch for it. It's an imitation of something he had seen in the capital, and having it made by a specialist ensures its durability. He's confident that it won't break any time soon, and he's excited for Resser to enjoy the freedom and fun of moving around in it. Resser is naturally curious about the wheelchair with wheels, though she understandably harbors some apprehension until she's fully convinced it won't pose any danger to her. But as she grows accustomed to it, she'll likely come to appreciate the newfound mobility and freedom it offers, once assured of its safety. Meanwhile, the apothecary notices that the dentures he crafted for Resser are starting to become loose. Knowing the importance of her dental health, especially for her eventual return home and the recovery of her lost memories, he decides to make new ones for her. Removing the old dentures turns out to be a messy process, but the apothecary manages it skillfully. Then, with careful hands, he fixes the new dentures in her mouth, hoping they'll provide a secure and comfortable fit. Considering her dental needs, the apothecary decides to prepare a dinner that's easy to chew, mindful of Resser's comfort. As the dinner is served, Resser eagerly begins to eat with her own hands, demonstrating the progress she's made in regaining control of her movements. The apothecary watches her with a mixture of pride and nostalgia, realizing that she now has the ability to feed herself after months of him assisting her. It's a bittersweet moment for him. Resser particularly enjoys the fish paste that the apothecary has prepared, savoring each bite with delight. The apothecary is pleased to see her enjoying the meal, knowing that his culinary skills have brought her joy. Despite the challenges she still faces, Resser's happiness at being able to feed herself is evident, and it brings a sense of fulfillment to the apothecary. Even though Resser doesn't have full control of her hand yet, she's able to move her arm enough to feed herself with some assistance. This independence marks a significant milestone in her recovery journey, and the apothecary can help but feel a sense of pride at her progress. At the same time, he also feels a bit of sadness at the thought that he's no longer needed to feed her. It's a reminder of how far she's come and how much she's overcome, but also of the bond they've shared during her rehabilitation. The apothecary decides to make use of his two extra days off from the workshop each month to help Resser. Recognizing her ability to use magic, he sees an opportunity for her to replenish her internal magic reserves. It's also a chance for him to take a much-needed break. With this in mind, they plan a restful getaway to a place filled with mana, not too far from the workshop. Their chosen destination is a secluded spot where they can find peace and tranquility without any disturbances. Resser sits comfortably in her new wheelchair while the apothecary pushes it from behind. Though it's a bit wobbly, the wheelchair makes their journey much easier. It also provides relief to the apothecary's back, which no longer has to bear the burden of carrying extra weight for miles. As they travel, the apothecary can't help but feel grateful for this opportunity to spend quality time with Resser and help her recharge her magical energy. It's a chance for them both to unwind and enjoy the serenity of nature, far away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. As they settle down for lunch in the perfect spot they've found, Resser's heart swells with gratitude and love for the people and the place that has shown her so much care and kindness. In this tranquil moment, she finds herself wishing she could stay here forever. The apothecary, on the other hand, reflects on how much has changed since Resser first arrived under his care. He never would have imagined a scene like this just a few months ago. He knows that Resser is making remarkable progress in her recovery, and he's proud of how far she's come. But amidst the beauty of their surroundings, the apothecary is struck by a realization. He knows that Resser will eventually regain her memories and be able to return home. When that day comes, his role in her life will come to an end. It's a bittersweet thought, and he realizes he needs to be honest with Resser about his intentions before she grows too attached to him and this place. As they enjoy their lunch together, the apothecary resolves to have a heartfelt conversation with Resser. He wants to ensure that she understands his feelings and plans for the future, even if it means facing the possibility of breaking her heart when the time comes for her to leave. 
As they sit in the calm of the forest, the apothecary's voice breaks the silence with a deep emotion. It's a moment that Russer has never experienced before, and she listens intently as he begins to reveal a part of his past. However, his opening statement is a bit confusing for Russer, leaving her puzzled about what he's trying to convey. As he continues to speak, the apothecary's words become more transparent. He confesses that he didn't help her out of the goodness of his heart, but rather for his own selfish reasons.